What is happening YouTube and Weight Loss Warriors? It's your boy C-Dub and I'm back with another video. And today I wanna to talk about weight training while fasting. So this is a topic that I think, you know, is kind of near and dear to my heart. I did a lot of weightlifting pre-corona and so I feel like I, I got a lot of information to, to share with you on this. But the reason this topic came to my head was I was listening to uh, Joe's podcast again the other day, Joe Rogan, and somebody asked him about intermittent fasting and, and whether he um, does it or not. And he said, yeah, I do it a lot. And he said, but my schedule gets weird and sometimes I'm eating in the morning and at night and I never eat before a show. And he was going through different stuff. But one of the things he said was he likes to work out very first thing in the morning. And then when he does that, he feels like he has to eat afterwards. And this is something that I've heard a lot in the community. But I've also heard people a lot of times say that you don't have to do it and that, you know, that's just overrated or it's nonsense. So I wanted to talk about the validity of it a little bit. I want to talk about weight training and fasting in general because I think this is a topic that there's a lot of controversy on and there's a lot of different opinions. So first and foremost, I want you to understand that we have two sources of fuel. We have glycogen and we have ketones, right? So when you have two sources of fuel, your body can burn either one of those to get through anything. And somebody that says they're quote unquote, right, they're, they're fat adapted, meaning basically that they're, they like to use their ketones or they can, you know, uh, another term that a lot of people say is, you know, they can be, you know, metabolically flexible. So, you know, basically they can go from ketones to glycogen. So these are different schools of thought. But at the end of the day, somebody that is just on an all-based keto diet at all times is probably likely to do a weightlifting workout and not feel like they have to eat as much as somebody that has some elements of glycogen in their diet. And the reason behind that is basically your muscles carry glycogen. So your muscles can hold a pound of glycogen in them at all times, right? Or that maybe it's three pounds of glycogen. It's a lot of glycogen, right? So that allows you to do short bursts of energy. And that has proven to be better energy in short bursts. A lot of people don't want to talk about that. A lot of people want to say, oh, well, fat is a better resource. Well, if you had to get into a cage and fight somebody, you want to have your muscles have glycogen so you can explode faster, right? Or if you wanted to run a sprint, you want glycogen so you can get that sprint going. But another misconception is that keto people can never have glycogen in their system because they're not eating any kind of you know carbs. They are eating some carbs that can be transferred over, but also when you eat protein, if you eat more protein than your body needs, it can change it over to glycogen and it can still be stored in your muscle. And those keto people are gonna be hurting a little bit more like the regular diet people, you know, after lifting weights. Because your body pushes out all of its glycogen. So what your body is saying to you right then is, I need more glycogen, right? I need to fill these muscles back up. We have used our reserves. Hey, we've used our reserves. And there's nothing wrong with eating then. Now, if you eat then, if you're you know only eating an eight hour window, now you've only got eight hours to get the rest of your eating done for the entire day and you gotta keep that in mind. So if you're lifting weights at five in the morning and eating at six, your window is now 6 a.m., 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 p.m. You're not having dinner with your family. Now, could you push that back to maybe nine and still work out and be done and fast through and grit and then at nine eat? Absolutely you could. Absolutely you could. Could you have your one meal if you're doing OMAD right after weight training? Sure. Could you push your weight training off to the night after you've eaten your meal or then or lift like I would try to do, lift and then eat right after. I was trying to eat, lift at like three in the afternoon so I could eat at five. All those different scenarios are good solid scenarios. Understand that there's nothing wrong with lifting weights fasted, but you do need to be conscious of how your body feels, right? And so, yes, you probably can get used to pushing through it and fasting for a while, but if you're feeling lightheaded and dizzy, like you're about to pass out and fall down, weightlifting is strenuous. I'm sure you guys have seen videos of those guys hit their highest, you know, their personal best record. Boom, deadlift. Yeah, they're there. They drop the weight. They start walking away and they fall out, pass out. If not, Google it. It happens, right? That's the kind of blood flow they're having and the energy they're expending. And all that stuff is at the highest levels of extreme. And if you can't do that fasted, there's nothing wrong with eating before you go to the gym. My overall point is, is no matter how we want to paint it, you've got to get yourself a priority list. You've got to say, what are, what, is my, what are my goals here? 
If your goal is to do some intermittent fasting for, you know, all of the benefits of better, you know, thought, you know, more fat burning, better, you know, um, feeling all the, all the time, having more energy, all the good benefits that intermittent fasting does. And then you're like, but I want to lift weights and I want to be strong for my size and my age and I want to feel healthy and I want to build muscle, right? You've got to understand there's going to be a certain amount of protein you need to eat. There's going to be a certain amount of times that you might have to eat that other people don't. That doesn't mean you cannot move your eight hours or your four hours or your two or one hour around to better suit your schedule. There's no reason why you can't, if you're lifting three days a week, eat after you lift three days a week for breakfast and then fast and, and don't eat again until dinner the next day. Get that extra long fast in, right? There's no reason you can't do it. And technically, a lot of people aren't going to tell you this either, but if you really want to, you can do intermittent fasting four days a week. You can do OMAD four days a week. And on your weight training days, you can throw it out the window on your other three. You know, or you can lift for four days. You can do intermittent fasting or OMAD the other three. There's no rule. It's all about fitting into your life what you think is the best. And then using that to, to cater your goals and adjusting accordingly along the way and understanding that, hey, it's about eating less often. It doesn't matter how you eat less often. Oh, man, I can't even talk today. How you eat less often versus how I eat less often. None of that matters. This means what can you do in your life to benefit yourself and get healthier. And I think intermittent fasting can be a part of that even if you're weight training. All right, I appreciate you guys. Check out one of my old videos. Click on my face and subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you on the next one. Peace.